Hello, hello, hello. My name is Lakeisha Hines and you're watching SOS, saving our sex lives one bedroom at a time. I am excited to be here with you guys. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Tonight we are talking about something that I don't know that you've heard me talk about before. We are looking at different uh, attachment styles and seeing how that affects what goes on in the bedroom. I don't know if you've ever heard of this before. If you have, put a Y in the chat. Let me know that you've heard of this before. And if you have not, put an N. Also, let me know where you're streaming from. Where are you in the world today? Where are you on the planet? So I can shout you out. Um, You guys, there's a lot going on at Couples Academy right now. So much going on. There's going to be some announcements coming out soon. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure that you are up to date with everything that is going on Couples Academy. And the way that you can do that is by downloading the Couples Academy app. Take a quick look. Welcome to the Couples Academy app. The Couples Academy app is your go-to hub for how to do marriage right. Get started with our app today by perusing our amazing features that conveniently allow you to connect. This app is packed with powerful content and resources to help you grow and stay connected. With this app, you can watch our messages, find marriage resources, watch, listen, and read the real-life stories of restored couples, Sign up for events, read articles and blog posts, stay up to date with push notifications, share your favorite messages via Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or email, and download messages for offline listening. For more information about the Couples Academy app, go to couplesacademy.org. Right. So again, download the Couples Academy app. You guys will get alerts, notifications about all of the shows, all of the new things coming up, upcoming events. You'll get all of that information. So make sure you download the Couples Academy app so you are not left behind. So you know exactly what the rest of us know. So you won't feel like you've been, uh, you missed the bus, <laughs> right? We want to make sure everybody is on the same page. All right, you guys. So again, <clears throat> tonight we are talking about different attachment styles and how that actually affects what happens in the bedroom. And I said, if you are familiar with different attachment styles, that I want you to actually drop a yes. Give me a why in the chat if you're familiar with attachment styles. And if you're not, it's okay. That's why you're here because I'm going to help you. I am going to help you. So tonight we're talking about the avoidant dismissive attachment style. <clears throat> Excuse me. What happens with this particular attachment style is it's when um, a child develops, when they're growing up, right, and their parent or their main caregiver doesn't show care or responsiveness past providing just the basic essentials like food, clothing, and shelter, right? So they don't get any other type of support or care on a regular basis or, you know, their parents don't necessarily respond to them. They ignore them and they just provide the basic needs, the basic necessity. So what ends up happening a lot of time is the child then disregards their own struggles and needs, just trying to maintain peace and to keep their caregiver close by, to be connected with their caregiver. And so their caregiver's lack of sensitive responses to their needs, it will actually cause them to grow up avoiding intimacy as much as possible and trying to hide their feelings when they're confronted by an emotional situation because that's what they're accustomed to doing. Because when they were growing up, their parents were not emotionally available for them. And so they learned how to just keep going without that attachment, right? Without that additional care being given, without 
um, someone responded to their needs. So they figured out how to exist, how to move forward, um, how to cope, even if it's in an unhealthy way, but they had to do something, right? So what they do is they try to avoid intimacy. So fast forward to adulthood, adults who have an avoidant attachment, they typically have a deactivated attachment system and they don't seek proximity and intimacy. A lot of times they'll avoid the display of emotions and actually appear very distant and cold. They also are less likely to fall in love and they don't seem to believe in the the happily ever after. They have a fear of intimacy and they tend to be less involved in relationships. They are likely to engage in casual sex. So less likely to fall in love and more likely to engage in casual sex. They often find that their relationships are unsatisfying. And the reason why they, the way that they feel, you know, what causes their relationships to be unsatisfying is because they're engaging in destructive behaviors like sabotaging the relationship. And so a lot of avoidant attachment um, individuals have a tendency to have um, fewer long-term relationships and they either prefer to abstain from sex or to have short-term and casual sex encounters. They might use fantasy or pornography as a substitute for their intimacy and you know they thrive on engaging in sex that is free from emotions and a lot of times sex and definitely intimacy can make the adult who has this avoidant dismissive attachment style can make them very uncomfortable now the trouble with this is that we know sex typically requires physical and psychological proximity or closeness and it can evoke discomfort in these avoiding individuals. So adults with this attachment style, they often don't even enjoy their sexual experiences and they're not likely to enjoy passionate and affectionate foreplay. So think about that. You can see how that might affect one's partner who's into being intimate and wanting passion and wanting to have affection in their foreplay. And just the thought of their partner not enjoying their sexual encounters. I mean, that can be really emotionally damaging and devastating for the partner who does not have this type of avoidant attachment style. So, I, I mean, you can see how it definitely would create problems in the relationship, right? So, <clears throat> also, their intimate behaviors are typically driven by their ego. Like, for example, sex might lead to high status and prestige among peers or by a desire to manipulate or control the partner. And they also are likely to use sex to reduce stress. And, you know, we'll go into kind of what this looks like. But I want to go back a little bit to adolescence, right? Those with an avoiding attachment, they typically perceive their sex drive as relatively low. And if they do have sex, it might be driven by self-enhancing motives like losing their virginity, right? But it has nothing to do with intimacy, connection, um, passion, or any of those things. Because generally, the avoidant adults, they don't seem to use sex to express their emotional uh, proximity and love for their partner, which again, can be extremely problematic if they have uh, a lover who is preoccupied or anxious or, you know, who relies on sex to feel loved and desired. Because a lot of times the, the adult with this avoidant attachment, they will oftentimes avoid sex because it's too intimate for them. And so having a partner who has this avoidant attachment style, it can be really, really tough. You know, um, one of the things that makes it really difficult to identify this avoidant attachment is, you know, the, the person with this attachment style, they're really independent. Like they're typically independent, they're self-directed, and 
And, you know, they're just uncomfortable with emotional closeness and intimacy, but they seem very confident, self-assured, in control of their lives. They're often highly successful because they put a lot of energy into their careers rather than their relationships. And that, again, is where we're going to see some issues. If you're putting more into your career than you are to me and we're in a relationship, why, 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 why would I be okay with that? <laughs> why am I okay with that? So I want to um, just point out again, some of these signs that you might be in a relationship with someone who has an avoidant attachment. So the very first like usual telltale sign is that they're really uncomfortable with emotional closeness. Like, not wanting to talk about their feelings, not wanting to share, um, you know, their emotions and not wanting to let you know what they're actually feeling. Like literally they might get anxious. They might get uncomfortable when you're trying to talk about emotions and feelings. All right. They dislike opening up to others and expressing their thoughts and feelings. Same sentiment. It's exactly what I'm saying. And it's not just you. It's it's anybody. They're uncomfortable with having that vulnerability and that transparency to share what they're thinking and what they're feeling, especially if it has to do with emotions. They might find it difficult to trust other people for sure, because that requires a level of vulnerability and intimacy. So they will find it difficult to do that. They also will find it difficult to rely and depend on other people because that requires a certain level of trust. And in order for you to trust people, you got to be vulnerable. You have to open yourself up to others. And they find that very, very difficult to do. So the preference then is to maintain boundaries. And when you're in a relationship, the boundaries that need to be maintained are really about outside people, right? Within your marriage, there shouldn't be a whole lot of boundaries that you should have within your marriage. I mean, obviously, you know, don't talk to me crazy. Um, no abuse, that type of thing. You know, you shouldn't be doing things that make you uncomfortable in the bedroom or that go against your morals, values, ethics, standards, like none of that. Right. But, you know, outside of those things, there typically shouldn't be a whole lot of boundaries. Um, in your marital relationship, as long as both parties are respecting each other and, um, again, not asking the other person to do something that they're uncomfortable with. Uh, <laughs> in any type of relationship, be it romantic or platonic, if, 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 if someone tries to get emotionally close to them, they most likely are going to pull away. Because it's too much, it's overwhelming, it's too much for them. So they will probably withdraw and pull away. They prefer to resolve conflict in the relationship by themselves. Why? Because in order for us to resolve conflict, I got to tell you how I'm feeling, how I'm thinking. I got to listen to how you're thinking, how you're feeling. And that's too much. It's too much, right? They don't like that. It's uncomfortable. They often seem distant, aloof, or even cold. Telltale signs. Um, I already mentioned that they see themselves as independent and self-sufficient. And they may act, they actually might act disdainfully toward a partner who's expressing emotions. So, you know, you're with this type of person who has this avoidant attachment style and you're having a really, really rough day where you are upset or you're emotional, you're crying, um, whatever the case may be, but like you are really going in with expressing your emotions that may turn them off. They may have disgust, like literally be repulsed by you sharing your feelings and emotions. So these are just, um, some of the signs. These are some of the major signs that you might be in a relationship with someone who has this avoidant attachment style. 
All right, I want to pause here and just shout out the people. Hello, Zone One Hearing, North London. Hello, hello. <laughs> Lori Thomas, what's up, my brother Zalis? What's up, what's up? Tiffany, hello, my sister. I love you too, honey. Hi, Vashon. Hi, hi, hi. And Miss Jewel, my sister, good evening. Good evening and all of you who are watching who did not drop your deets of where you are streaming from. All good. Good evening. Tiffany says, I have anxious attachment and my husband is avoidance. My guess, he loves sex, but rejects me and keeps having emotional affairs with other women. Any thoughts? Hey, Tiffany. So <clears throat> great, great comment. Um, I saw that you, you said you have anxious attachment and I'm actually going to cover that. I want to talk about that. Um, Coming up, I want to talk about the different attachment styles. So I'm going to cover that one. Um, but you said you think uh, it's avoidance. I don't think so because you're saying he loves sex but rejects you and keeps having an emotional affairs with other women. So if it was an avoidant, dismissive attachment, he would not be having emotional affairs because they don't want to express emotions and they don't do well with sitting in other people's emotions and processing that. So if he can have an emotional affair with someone else, that means that he not only is he open to sharing his emotions, but he's open to receiving the emotions of others. So it may be something that is going on in your relationship that is causing him to re to reject you. I don't know if there's trauma that has previously occurred in a relationship. There may be some unforgiveness there where he's got a wall up. I don't know if you've hurt him in the past. Um, I'm not sure, sis, but it doesn't sound like in avoiding attachment because again, he's connecting emotionally with other people, just not with you. And uh, you said he loves sex, but rejects you. So are you saying that he rejects you sexually? And if so, again, you know, when did that start? And like, I'm, I have so many questions, like, you know, was there trauma? Was there betrayal? Was there something that took place between the two of you that caused that shift? Or has he always been that way towards you? I don't know. I need more information. But as I said, it does not sound like um, an avoidant attachment. Hello, Reminisce from Dallas, Texas. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for posting where you're streaming from. All right, you guys, we're going to take a quick break and then I'm going to uh, come back and talk to you about how the avoidant dismissive attachment affects your bedroom activity. All right. So quick break. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere. You are watching SOS. When 45 men from all walks of life come together in one place for one purpose, there is a collective harmony that produces an amplification of power that leaves an impact on the lives of men that cannot be erased. A fraternity of legendary men, all at the tipping point, on the precipice of greatness, meeting for one weekend to turn their worlds inside out. For the first time ever, the Foundry Experience, not an event, not a seminar or retreat, but an opportunity to come face to face with the man you were always destined to be. 
If you want a life that's better than the one that you are living, meet us January 2023 for the Foundry Experience. Hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, Dark Knight K, what's up? Hey, Sam. Good evening. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching tonight. We're talking about avoidant attachment, avoidant dismissive attachment style. And we are right now pivoting into talking about how it impacts your bedroom activity. All right. So... Let's dive right in. Don't forget, you guys, if you have questions, um, always drop your questions. And if I have time before I log off, of course, I will be sure to answer your questions. All right. But let's go ahead and pivot to how this shows up in the bedroom. All right. These are 10 signs of avoidant dismissive attachment in bed. Number one, there's discomfort with sexual activities. And the foundation for that is because. They require intimacy and connection. And again, that vulnerability. So they are uncomfortable with sexual activities. Number two, less to no sexual activity or only emotion free sex. Again, that feels safe. If I don't have to express any emotions, I can just engage in sexual activity and don't have to do anything that makes me feel like I'm being intimate with you. Like, you know, the gazing into your eyes, uh, deep, passionate kisses. Like you may not get that. You may not get any kisses at all, but the affection is definitely limited. Um, so it's emotion free or maybe no sex at all. That definitely could be a sign that you have an avoidant dismissive, um, partner. And again, that could be the end result for what goes on in the bedroom. Number three, using sex to manipulate the partner to protect themselves from the partner's negative affect to reduce stress or to achieve high status among peers. I want to park here for a minute because this is a lot. And so I really want to break this down. So using sex to manipulate the partner. So if the partner wants to have sex to feel close, right? To feel close to their partner and to try to have some type of connection with their partner, they may do it just to get something out of their partner. Okay, well, if I give you this, then you give me that, right? You want the sex because you want to feel connected to me or whatever. And if I just give them a little, then they'll feel connected and they'll keep showing up and serving me in all of these other areas. So you see, it's manipulation. It's not that they're enjoying the sex or they really even want to have the sex, but they're just doing it because they're trying to manipulate their partner into getting whatever it is that they want from them, which is not fair. And it, it really can cause major damage on a partner who finds out later on that they were just manipulating them all along. Because when you're intimate with the person and you're having sex with the person, there are connections that are taking place, especially with the woman. You know, there are certain emotions that are attached to that a lot of times. So there's automatically a mental connection and a heart connection being made when there's a physical connection. And so you, the person who has this avoiding attachment, using that as a way to manipulate, again, it's a form of betrayal, to be completely honest, because it's it's dishonest. And you're not, uh, or they're not showing up as their true, genuine, authentic selves. And so then when the other person finds out that they've been manipulating them, it feels like, you know, we've been living a lie. And as I said, it can have long term devastating effects, effects on that partner. Okay, so using it for manipulation, using it to protect themselves from the partner's negative effect. So, you know what? 
They get upset every time. I don't want to have sex. We argue. We fight. So you know what? Let me just have sex with you so that I don't have to deal with all that negativity. I don't have to argue with you. We don't have to fight. And I get to keep my peace. So yeah, here you go. Let me give you a little something. So you leave me alone, basically. And again, how cruel is that? You know, for the partner to just receive because you're trying to shut me up? Very insensitive, unkind, unloving, and definitely something, again, that can cause long-term damage and effects to that partner. Using sex to reduce stress. So basically, I just, I feel a lot of tension in my body. I'm all worked up. Work was a lot for me. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm stressed out. You know what? I Let me go have sex with my partner just so I can get all this stress off of me. Not because I'm trying to serve my partner, not because I'm concerned about what they're going through or what they're feeling, or I want to please them and make them happy. I'm just trying to reduce my stress. It's very selfish, very inconsiderate. There are times where, yes, we all are in a place where we feel like I just need a release. (laughs) Like, granted, we've all been there. But this, what this is talking about is consistently using sex to reduce stress. You're not having sex for the sake of, I want to connect and be intimate with my partner. I'm literally only having sex just so I can reduce my stress. Okay. Very selfish and inconsiderate of your partner. Um, Unless that's an agreement that the two of you have. Lastly, using sex to achieve high status among peers. Oh man, if I can conquer that one over there, if I can get that notch on my belt, if if I can get that person over there to cheat on their significant other, then that makes me feel like I'm I've accomplished something, that I have this high status and I have something that I can brag about. We shouldn't use people in that way. And a lot of that has to do with insecurity when you're trying to achieve high status amongst peers. Who are you and what are you trying to prove something for to whom and for what? For what? If you're confident in yourself, you're not concerned about what your peers think or feel about your status, right? So it's more so of you dealing with whatever is going on internally inside of you versus trying to worry about what's going on with your peers and how they think about you and how they view you. When you're confident, you don't care. And when you're secure, you don't care. All right, next, using sex to maximize control and emotional distance. We should never use sex to control in any way and definitely not to remain emotionally distant from our partners. Like the whole purpose of connecting with someone, being in a relationship with someone is that you want to have that closeness. And so if you are with a partner who desires to have that closeness and you're not making an effort to do that, you're doing a disservice to them and yourself. Because you are not experiencing the fullness of what that relationship could really be. And you're missing out. Next, not enjoying foreplay. Again, that's a way to connect and be intimate and, you know, to really give and receive pleasure. But again, if you are dealing with an avoided dismissive attachment style, they may not enjoy foreplay because, again, it's too close. It's too connected. It's too intimate. um, And it's just overwhelming and it's too much. Pursuing non-committed or casual sex relationships. Um, That is definitely how this can show up in a person's life and affect their bedroom activity. I don't want a commitment. I, I I just want sex. I may not even want to be friends with benefits. I literally just want the benefits. I just want to have sex. That's it. Or some people will go a little step further and they'll have a casual sex relationship. But we understand the whole purpose of this relationship is for sexual fulfillment fantasizing about sex with someone other than your partner. Oof. Fantasizing can lead to acting on, which can lead to infidelity. So again, having sex or fantasizing about sex with someone outside of your relationship um, may be exciting, may be stimulating because they're just thinking, I don't have to have the commitment Um, I don't have to even maybe talk to this person outside of this sexual uh, encounter. So that could be very attractive to them. And eventually, if they fantasize enough, they're going to act on it. 
having affairs and short term sexual relationships. Same thing, you know, with an affair, I may never talk to you again. It could be a one night stand. Or again, we understand that we're engaging in this just because of sex. That's it. That's all we're trying to do. Short term sexual relationships. So I can be sleeping with one person, but it's only going to be for a short period of time because if we go beyond a certain point, feelings are going to get involved. And then I'm not here for that, right? Because I'm I'm avoiding dealing with emotions and feelings and all of that. And then lastly, using fantasy as a substitute for intimacy. So dreaming about it, making up um, this make-believe relationship in your mind, fantasizing as a substitute for in- intimacy, thinking about what you know it could be, looking at other people's relationships and situations and and using that as a fantasy and saying in your mind, telling yourself that, oh, I have intimacy, but all it's doing is taking place in your mind and you're not implementing any of these things in your relationship. It's just all in your mind. So in that regard, it doesn't count. It does not count. So again, being in a relationship with someone who has this avoiding attachment style, it, I mean, it is, it can be really, really difficult. Very, very difficult, especially if you are one who craves that connection and love. Um, sometimes people with avoiding attachment styles, they might even have a lot of friends and they can be a lot of fun to be around. And they're not lonely, but they only have surface level connections and they never, ever really require emotional support from others. And so because they don't require emotional support, then they feel like whomever they're with or whoever their friends are shouldn't need emotional support either, which again, we are not all the same. And so it is an unrealistic expectation for the avoiding attachment person to think that other people don't need emotional support. Okay. So um, many, many times that person, that avoidant partner, they just really never allow the other person in. And they tend to have these walls up or boundaries to prevent them from being intimate, prevent them from getting close emotionally. And that will ultimately prevent the development of a fulfilling and deep relationship. But once a romantic, uh, romantic relationship starts to evolve into like a more meaningful connection, that avoidant partner, they typically will close themselves off and pull back. And they'll even look for petty reasons to end the relationship, right? They'll start talking about how, um, you know, the the partner has these inconsequential actions. They start uh, picking at their appearance or they start talking about just slightly annoying habits. and, And that's the reason why we couldn't be together anymore because of these little petty things. But ultimately, ultimately what it is, is they're uncomfortable because they're starting to get too, starting to get too close to the other person. So I hope this helps you tonight. Hopefully, you know, you guys are not the avoidant dismissive person or not in a relationship with someone who is avoidant dismissive. But if you are, there is hope. There are things that can be done. And, you know, you just really, you you just got to do the work. Like you really have to work with that person, be patient with that person. If you are the one that has the avoidant dismissive attachment, then there's definitely work that you have to do. You need to get you some help, get in contact with a third party. I am here to assist um, in helping you to be more comfortable and ease your way into intimacy because um, believe it or not, we all need it. We all need intimacy. I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about intimacy. One might argue that we all need sex too, but but we definitely need intimacy. We all do on some level. And so, like I said, there is work that can be done to help, but it definitely is not something that can be done alone. So I want to thank you all so, so much for watching this evening. I want to say thank you for letting me know where you were streaming from and dropping your comments and questions. And I want you to meet me back here next week where we're going to talk about the next um, attachment style and how it impacts your bedroom activity. But until then, make sure you tune in to the Couples Academy show um, in the morning. 
And let's see, what's today? Tuesday. <laughs> so you have two more mornings of the Couples Academy show Friday. Please be sure to watch Ask the Expert. So even if you didn't ask something tonight, please make sure that you uh, sign on Friday morning and watch Ask the Expert so you can post your questions there. And don't forget, before I do tomorrow night with Walter and Charmaine Jennings, if you are married or I'm sorry, engaged, um, single, think you might want to be engaged in a relationship or not. Even if you're married, you can still watch because there's something that we probably missed in our premarital counseling or when we were dating before we actually got married that we can implement even now within the marriage. So there's so much support there for you guys. Take advantage of it. Take advantage of it and book a session if you're needing help with your avoidant dismissive attachment style or any other issues you may be having in the bedroom. Make that discovery call and book a session with me. All right. All right, you guys have a good evening. Love you. Mean it.